Tshuva is not about only doing tshuva after sin. Tshuva is the essence of life. We have to rethink every day, even three times a day. Are we living life the best way we can? How can we become a bit better? Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is the Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. Parshas Vayelech, a life of Teshuva. Shalom to everyone. I would like to share with you something from this week's Haftarah. The Haftarah is a very famous Haftarah because it's the Haftarah we say on Shabbos Shuvah right before Yom Kippur. And probably the most famous Pasuk from the Haftarah is the one I want to speak about, which is, it says, Shuvah Yisrael Ad Hashem Elokecha Ki Kashalta Ba'avonecha. It's a call, calling out to Bnei Yisrael, please come back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because you sinned, you have sinned. The Gemara in Yoyma, Daf Pei Vav Amudalef, says the following, Amar Rabbi Levi, Rabbi Levi says, G'doy lo tshuva, tshuva is a huge thing, it's an awesome thing, because it has the intensity of getting all the way up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right under his Kisei HaKavud. G'doy lo tshuva shemagas ad Kisei HaKavud, and how do we know that? From this week's Haftar, Shene'emar Shuva Yisrael ad Hashem Elokecha. Come back to Kodesh Buch, Mamash up to him, Ad Hashem Lokecha, which symbolizes the idea, a figure of speech, of course, HaKodesh Buchu's chair. The question I think is uh, pretty blatant is we always know that it's better to bring a Pasuk from Chumash than from Navi. So why did the Gemara in Yuma, meaning why did Rabbi Levi not bring the Pasuk from Dvarim Lamid? It says, Mefurish over there, a similar pasuk, Veshavta ad Hashem Elokecha, similar idea, Do tshuva, come up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Veshamata Bekolo. And you should listen to what he has to say. So why, why, why not bring this pasuk? For now, I'll just add one more question before we bring the, the concept that answers both these questions. The other question is, we all know that we say Shmon Esri three times a day, on Yom Kippur four times. And in Shemun Esre, of every day Shemun Esre, we first say the bracha, Hachzireinu b'tshuva shleim alafanecha, this concept of coming back to Kaddish Buchu, doing tshuva. But isn't it ironic that the bracha after that is Slach lanu avinu, please forgive us? Logically, it would make a lot more sense to first say, Hachadish Buchu, Please forgive us for our sins. And then we do tshuva. Then we say the bracha of tshuva. Because we want to do tshuva. Come back to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, after we sinned. But if we didn't sin and we're just saying, Please Hashem, bring us back. It doesn't really make so much sense at first glance. Hence, it would lead to believe that it makes a lot more sense to first say, Please forgive us for our sins. And yes, we sinned. And we want to come back to you. And only after slach lanu, HaKzireinu b'shuva shleim alefanecha. So why is the order the way it is? To answer both these questions, I want to share with you a famous story with Rav Sa'ad Yagon. Rav Sa'ad Yagon, he came to visit a certain city and therefore he went to someone's house as a guest and he was treated very nicely. But his host didn't realize it was Rav Saad Yagon. After a couple of days, when the Balabas realized that his guest was the Heilige Rav Saad Yagon, he quickly hurried to apologize to him and ask him for Mechila that he didn't give him enough covered like he deserved. But Rav Saad Yagon said to him, what do you mean? You gave me a lot of covered. You, you, you really treated me very nicely as, as an amazing host. So the person answered back to him and he said, yes, I did treat you very nicely, but had I known who was in my house, the Heilige of Saad Yagon, I would have give, given you a lot more and a lot more honor. When of Saad Yagon heard this, like many of the G'doylim do, he said, Wow, I can take a lesson from this. If this person realizes that he has to ask for forgiveness from me because he didn't give me enough covered yesterday because he didn't realize who I am 
I should learn from here a huge Musar, and that is, I should every day ask for Mechila from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because every day I learn Torah and I understand HaKadosh Baruch Hu a bit better. And I realize who HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a bit more. And hence, I didn't give HaKadosh Baruch Hu enough kavod, enough honor yesterday, because I didn't know Him as much. Every day I learn more, I realize, wow, how much Hashem does for us what Hashem does, and therefore I should ask for Mechila from HaKadosh Buchu every day, the same way this host asked for forgiveness for me, because he didn't honor me as much, because he didn't know who I was. And indeed, they bring down that Rav Sadia Gaon did tshuva every day on this idea, that even that little bit, he didn't give enough kavod to HaKadosh Buchu, could, he didn't realize what, an, what, what HaKadosh Buchu is all about. And every day he learned a bit more, he realized how much more he needs to give him honor. Now, what does this have to do with us? This concept of Rab Sa'adi Gaon doing tshuva to Gadish Buhu, he didn't sin. He didn't sin at all. But rather he realized that on his level, understanding Gadish Buhu a bit more, he realized how much more he needs to be mechabed, honoring and thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for what he does. And that comes from a place that a person, like Rav Saad Yagon, is always searching, how can I get close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? All I want is get close to, to get close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, have more ruchni spirituality in my life. And therefore, he's consistently seeking ways to see how, how he can grow. And therefore, he's doing tshuva, wow! I should have thought this way already yesterday. A person that continuously wants to grow, he's doing tshuva, but it's not the type of tshuva because he sinned. It's a type of tshuva of, on whatever level you are, you, you don't want to live a shallow life. You want to live a life that's a deep, a deep way of li- living, a, a, a way, not a shallow way of thinking, but rather... Let's live life, what life is all about. Why HaKadosh Baruch Hu created us and put us in this world. I want to use it to its maximum. The Neshama is me. And I want to grow and reach a higher level of Kedusha, of holiness. All I want to do is Ratzon Hashem. And therefore, a person on that level will do the, this type of tshuva. Not because it's coming from a sin. Hare, we know Rabbeinu Yehina Shari Tshuva, the famous sefer that everyone's learning right now. During these days, it's Meduyak in his sefer, several places, that there's really two types of tshuva. One type of tshuva that in all our questions today, we're assuming it's that type of tshuva, is the obvious one. That of course a person that sinned has to do tshuva. That Rabbeinu Yehina says a person must be really foolish not to do tshuva when he has a huge opportunity to do tshuva on his sin he did. A person that doesn't do tshuva, it's like a person that had an, a, a get-out-of-jail card and he didn't use it. But rather, that tshuva is obvious. But we're talking about a different type of tshuva. A tshuva the person has to think in a deep way how is living life. What the journey of life is all about. Where is he heading towards? And do the recalibration we talked about last week. Right now, these are the days to do this work. To try to get close to Hashem. Not necessarily because we sinned. With this concept that there's two types of tshuva. There's the ongoing tshuva of just trying to get close. Tshuva is getting close to Hashem. Going back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It doesn't necessarily have to come off of a sin, but rather just, just thinking about how we're living life and realizing, wow, there's a way to live life in a way better way for us, to get closer to Hashem, to be, to be more in touch with our spiritual side, and realize that that's why Hashem put us here. As we said last week, the Mesilas Hashem talks about this idea at length. With this, we answered our two questions that we raised. Question number one was, why is the Gemara in, Mas- in Maseches Yoima bringing the Pasuk from our Haftarah where there is a Pasuk that shows the same thing from uh, Chumash? Because it says in Chumash, V'shavta ad Hashem lokecha v'shamata bekolo. 
So why is it bringing the Pasuk from our Haftarah? And the answer is, because you could have made a mistake. And, and you could have thought that the, only this elite type of tshuva, tshuva that's not done as a result of a sin, but rather the elite type of tshuva. Wow, even though I didn't sin, I want to get closer to Hashem. Let me think. Let me recalibrate and see how I can make a change in my life to get closer to Hashem. Wow, that's tshuva that reaches Ad Kisei HaKavod until HaKadosh Buhu. But perhaps if I do the other type of tshuva, which is obvious, that's not such a big deal. That doesn't reach all the way up to HaKadosh Buhu. Comes the Pasuk, only the Pasuk and the to Megal it to you and to reveal to you, yes, even that tshuva it has the potential to reach Ad Hashem HaKadosh Buhu, especially when we do it out of Ahava. Because if you only do it as, out of fear, it can change this doingness to be shigagos. But if we really do it out of love, out of ahava, which we can reach that level in Sukkot time, then it even changes our veras to, on a certain level, kilu we did mitzvahs. With this concept, we also answer our second question, which is, how does it make sense that in Shmonesli we first say the bracha, and only then slachlan. The answer is, tshuva is not about only doing tshuva after sin. Tshuva is the essence of life. We have to rethink every day, even three times a day. Are we living life the best way we can? How can we become a bit better? Just like Avsadi Agon, always wanted to become a bit better. Always realized every day what Hashem is all about. And, and he realized, whoa, yesterday I didn't give enough kavod to HaKadosh Baruch We always want to continuously grow and think how we lived our life. That's what G'doylim do. A big person on a spiritual level, he always thinks, what did I do today? How could I become better? I want to try to grow for tomorrow. The Gemara Brochus Daf Yud Zayin says the following, Margela de Pume, de Rove Tachlis Chochma Tshuva Maisim Toivim. Rava said, the whole essence, the epitome of wisdom of Chochma is to do Tshuva and Maisim Toivim and do good deeds. So good deeds, obviously, yeah. If you have wisdom, you'll do good deeds. But why is wisdom the reason to do Tshuva? The question begs itself if, if we only knew that there was one type of tshuva to do on sins. That's obvious a person to, should do tshuva on sins, as we quoted Rabbein Yehina earlier. The answer is no. The epitome of wisdom is to do tshuva not for a sin, but just because you continuously want to get closer to Hashem and make sure that your ship of life is heading in the right direction, getting closer to Hashem as the days progress. There's another hint to this concept, that there's this type of tshuva that's not necessarily coming off of a, a sin, but rather just rethinking what life is all about and getting closer to Hashem. And that is, we know Chazal teach us that Hoshea, the Navi, Hoshea the prophet, merited this nevuah of our Haftarah, Shuva Yisrael, to come back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why? Because he came from the generation, from the offspring of Reuven, who was, says the Midrash, I think it's a Yalkut Shimoni, he was Rosh Verishon Lechoizun B'Tshuva. He was the first in history to do Tshuva. All the Mepharshim asked, what do you mean? It's, it's foolish that Kain and Adam Arishon already did Tshuva before Reuven. According to what we're saying, the answer can be, that Kain and Adam Rishon, although they did tshuva first, but on what type of tshuva did they do? They did the obvious tshuva that as, was as a result of their sin. As opposed to Reuven, who didn't, even though the Torah does as if he sinned, but he didn't really sin. He didn't do an act of a sin. He was too, too, much, he was too busy with trying to do kibud avayim, he cared about his mother. So he did an act over there that on his level was like a sin, but it wasn't really a sin. As the Gemara says, that whoever thinks that Uven really sinned is making a mistake. But rather, he lived life on his level more shallow than what he could have been, than the level he could have been on. 
As we know, when he got to Chocho from his father, it says about him, Pachas Kamai Mal Total, that he was, he was a bit too quick on the trigger when he, when he did things, and therefore, just like water, they go really quickly from a high place to a low place, so too sometimes he did things like that. So in his level, because we know he was on a very high level, he lived on a shallow way, his whole way of life was a bit shallow relative to where he could be holding. And on that he did tshuva, meaning he did tshuva even though he didn't sin. So throughout all this, all the, all the, the same concept is answering all these questions, that there's two types of tshuvas. Of course, that I don't need to convince you, of course, that Kaddish Buhu did huge chesed for us, that we can do tshuva on a sin. But more than that, we should take advantage of also throughout our lives, of this other type of tshuva, which is just recalibrating once in a while and realizing and ensuring, especially as we get older, that we're living life with the purpose to get closer to Hashem. Everything else, everything else is a means for that. To really take advantage of this huge chesed that Gadish Bukh created for us, this tool of tshuva to get closer to Hashem. I just would like to end off with saying that in today's day and age, people do almost everything to try to get rid of wrinkles. Or during the teenage years, they, they would do everything that they possibly can to get rid of acne. So too, having a sin on one's soul, although it's not visible, it will be an oil on Abba, but it's not visible in this world, so it's hard for us to realize, but it's, a million times worse. And Bo Hashem, we have a tool, an easy tool relatively, but relatively speaking, to help us cleanse and wash away that sin that leaves this huge mark on our soul. And hence, we should ensure that we always do tshuva, not only on Yom Kippur, but during the year, but especially on Yom Kippur, a sales made tshuva, and the basic steps of doing tshuva is number one, chalata, regretting what we did, truly regretting what we did. Number two is aziva sachet, leaving the sin, saying I don't want to connect to this anymore. Number three is to do vidui, confession, which is what Yom Kippur is all about. And number four is Kabbalah Latid, taking upon ourselves for the future to do everything we can to refrain ourselves from, from doing this sin again. And of course, the most important thing is HaKadosh Buch, who's Boichen Klayus Valev, and he knows really what's in our hearts. So we can't, and that's what we're judged on, based on where we're holding in our hearts. So we can't let Yetzirah to convince us and tell us, come on, we know what's going to happen next week. You're going to go back, right back to the way you were. Because first of all, there's a good chance we won't. And second of all, we're right now being judged based on our hearts. And all Thank you for joining us. This is the Prism of Torah. Visit our website, prismoftorah.com, where you'll find a full archive of hundreds of past Tivri Torah. Subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to share with your friends and family. Sponsorship opportunities are available for all of our episodes. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipment. Produced by Ellie Podcast Productions.